Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. My name is Cassandra and I'm going to take you through this yin yoga practice specifically for your upper body. We're going to focus on the mid back, upper back, as well as our shoulders. I do recommend having two blocks for this class. We are going to use our props. If you don't have any blocks at home, you can probably switch this out with some um, folded up blankets or a couple of really dense pillows or cushions that should work as well but if you have your blocks definitely have them and just keep them somewhere close towards the top of your mat we're gonna start laying down on our backs we're gonna begin with a breathing technique that really helps us focus on this area of the upper body this is a way to involve and engage the diaphragm and it will show you if you do have tension and tightness through your shoulders your upper back as well as your mid back so as you lower down you can bring your feet flat to the floor with your knees bent and we're going to reach our arms all the way up overhead i think i've done this breathing technique maybe once before in another yoga class that i taught this is something i learned from physiotherapy actually because i do have a lot of tension and tightness especially in my mid back so this breathing technique is super 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 helpful so what i want you to do here is to press your lower back into the floor so really get the entire length of your spine grounded and pushing down into the mat with your arms up overhead you might already be feeling a stretch through your shoulders and through your armpits so it's a little hard for me to talk as I do this breathing technique with you. So I'll just explain it first. You're going to be inhaling and exhaling through the nose. When you inhale, you're going to try to balloon up your belly as much as possible. So, so really puffing out through your belly. And then as you exhale, you're going to try to press your chest and your rib cage down while keeping your belly lifted up like a balloon. So every time you breathe, try to create even more of a balloon with your lower belly. And every time you exhale, imagine someone is almost like pushing down on your chest. And at the same time, you're keeping your belly lifted. So I'll do just like a round or two to see, to demonstrate what I mean. Because again, it is very hard to talk and do this at the same time. So I'll just show you a few rounds here. So just like this, and I feel this super intensely through my mid back as well as into my shoulders. So we're gonna do about 10 rounds together. I'll talk through the first few, and then we're just going to, I'm just gonna let you practice it in silence. So go ahead, keep your lower back flat to the floor, push the back of your palms into the ground. Inhale, balloon up your lower belly, Exhale, press the rib cage down, try to keep your belly button up. Inhale, lift your belly button up, balloon through your stomach. Exhale, press the upper back down, really contract through the rib cage. Keep going, inhale, inflate your stomach with the breath. Exhale, press rib cage down. Keep going here. Push down. Take about three more. Inhale into your stomach. Exhale, press the ribs down. And release, open up your arms into a little cactus shape. Hopefully you guys felt this one. And let's come into a twist. You can move your hips over to the right, just a few inches, and then drop both knees over to the left. Emphasize pressing your right shoulder blade down to the mat and reaching your right shoulder and your right hip away from one another. You can use your left hand to help guide your thigh down and almost as if you were doing that same breathing pattern, keep inhale deep into your belly and as you exhale, see if you can bring those ribs in and down. This will help you access the twist 
and to really feel it through your mid back, upper back and into your right shoulder. So yin yoga will be in each pose for about three minutes or so. Try to relax into the floor. Closing your eyes and breathing deeply. We're going to ease out of the twist on this side. Lift your knees back up and through to center and just take a moment to pause before we go to the other side. So bringing your hips back to neutral, lowering your right arm. Just noticing the effects of that pose on the right side of your body. And when you're ready, we can go and twist to the other side. So I'm going to open my left arm, bending the elbow at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to move my hips a little bit over towards the left before dropping both knees over to the right. So pressing that rib cage down, pressing your left shoulder blade down and moving your left hip and your left shoulder away from one another. Slow, steady breaths.
Coming back up through to center. Take your time. Keep breathing even through your transitions. And just like before, you can rest your hands on your lower belly. Let your knees flop in towards one another. And just feel how a twist like this done reclined can affect your upper body. And we'll be coming into a straight legged forward fold, just rolling onto one side and pushing yourself up. And you can extend your legs out in front of you. We're going to do a forward fold as a way to really stretch along the spine. If straight legged forward fold doesn't work for you, you're welcome to do butterfly or open up your legs wide but just make sure you are folding forward. I do like to use the blocks for this pose. My feet are about hip width distance apart or so, and I'm gonna walk my hands forward. I'm allowing my spine to round and just finding my natural edge, this natural point of resistance. Allow for your head to be heavy, your chin will tuck in slightly. And this is a way to really stretch along the entire posterior chain so from the crown of your head working all the way down the back all the way down the back of the legs and then if you'd like you can also have your prop to give you a little bit more support and just come to a regular neutral breathing pattern here in and out through your nose Try to soften your shoulders away from your ears. Not chasing sensation or trying to go deeper in a pose than we need to. Less is always more when it comes to yin. And as we hold this forward fold, you might notice that you're able to get a little deeper naturally. I'll try not to force it.
Take 10 more breaths here. And I want you to come out super slowly out of this pose. You can push your hands into the mat and just walk them in inch by inch. Don't rush. <sighs> Deep breaths even as you uncurl. You're really noticing the effects of this pose. And you can cross your legs here and just take a moment, hands on your knees, sitting up tall, roll your shoulders down and away from your ears. We'll be transitioning into child's pose, but really doing it in a way that focuses specifically on the upper body. And I'm going to keep one block on each side of my mat at the top here. So for this variation of child's pose, I'm not going to have my knees out too wide. I'm going to keep them closer than what I normally would do when I'm focusing on my hips. And as I'm pressing my hips back towards my heels, I'm going to reach my arms out. I'm trying to keep my arms about shoulder width distance apart, palms flat to the floor. And really we're trying to emphasize melting our chest and getting our heart to connect down to the mat. I like to do this variation with my chin on the mat. This might not be appropriate for you at home. I don't want it to cause any pain or pinching in your neck at all. So if you feel that, you know this option is not the right one for you. Instead, you're just going to bring your forehead and the tip of your nose to rest down on the mat. You can even put a block underneath your forehead if the floor feels like it's just a little bit too far away. But if the range of motion is there, I really like this variation of pushing the chest down and just bringing the chin to the mat. And every time you exhale, imagine your heart getting a little bit closer towards the ground. So melting the tension between your shoulder blades. And breathing deeply in and out through your nose.
From Child's Pose, we'll be coming into Sphinx next. I'm going to be doing this with blocks, but you can take your time to come out of this one and just slide onto your belly. Remember, there's no need to rush. Really feel the movements between the poses. The transitions are really just as important as the poses themselves. Usually we do Sphinx with our forearms down on the mat. This is certainly an option you can take, working on rolling the shoulders back and opening up through your chest. If you'd like, you can do the variation that I'll be coming into just a little deeper by putting the blocks under each forearm and each elbow. So what I don't want is for this action to strictly be focusing on your lower back. I'm really trying to get this through my mid back and my upper back. So I'm going to let my chest melt down a little bit as I lightly squeeze my shoulder blades behind me. And you might need to adjust a little bit with your props. Take your time to get comfortable and settled. Three principles in yin yoga is to find our edge, to be still, and to hold the pose. We're lightly pushing the pubic bone into the floor, so lengthening tailbone towards the heels.
be pressing back up into tabletop pose on hands and knees. Take your time. You can shift your blocks out of the way if you had them underneath your elbows and forearms. And pushing back, take a moment here to do whatever feels good and intuitive to you. Maybe a few rounds of cat and cow, or just shifting side to side. So two more poses before we come into Shavasana. We'll come into puppy pose or melting heart next. Similar to what we were doing in child's pose, but a bit more of an intense variation. So you're welcome to just redo child's pose if you prefer. Keeping your hips over your knees, you're gonna walk your hands out in front of you. And I like to actually grip and hold on to the edges of my mat. And then I'm melting my chest down. And same options apply here. You're either bringing your forehead down to the floor or to your block. Or if you'd like, you can bring your chin down. And as the pose is called melting heart, that's really what we're trying to emphasize here. Is pressing the chest down, pressing the armpits down. Making sure you're not going too far into the pose. This is quite an intense one. And if you are very flexible in your lower back, I'm going to encourage you to pull your lower belly in a little bit so that you're not rounding through too much through your lower back. I really want this to emphasize an opening through your mid and upper back and shoulders instead. So there's a little bit of core engagement and a complete softening through the upper body. And we'll start to release from this pose. You can just walk your hands back and let your hips rest over your heels. Coming up to sit in a little kneeling stance here. 
roll your shoulders back. Bring your hands back behind you, up on your fingertips. Lift your chest up, squeeze your shoulder blades and your elbows as if you were trying to bring your elbows to touch and really lift and expand up through your chest. And let's release. So we'll do a different variation of supported fish before coming into Shavasana and finishing our practice together. I'm only going to be using one block for this. So I'm putting it on its lowest level and the block is going to go directly underneath my upper back. So usually for supported fish, I have a block under my upper back and under my head. But for this one, I really like to have it only one relaxing the head down and then if it's appropriate you can extend your arms up overhead and you might need to wiggle a little bit just to find that comfort spot for the block making sure it's not too high not too low not too low it's roughly halfway up my shoulder blades and if it's too much to have your arms raised you can also just keep them by your side yourself get heavier and heavier with every breath you take and you can absolutely keep a bend in your elbows you can change your arm position if having them up overhead feels a little too intense for you right now if you can't breathe deeply that's a good indication that this variation of the pose is a bit too intense for you and that you need to ease out slightly. If you had your arms up overhead, you can bring them back down so we need to ease off of the block. You might want to bend your knees to do this, really however is comfortable to you. 
just moving the prop out of the way before laying down any little movements and adjustments here that feel good now whenever you're ready we all meet in shavasana taking up space with the arms and the legs closing your eyes letting your spine be fully leveled shrug your shoulders down and away from your ears so that you're really opening and externally rotating through your shoulders and just notice what has changed and shifted as a result of our practice together and we'll take a few minutes here together in silence and stillness Breathe deeply, waking back up, let's move fingers and toes, maybe turn your head lightly from side to side, and stretch your arms up overhead, big stretch here, and you can roll to the side just so you can press yourself up come to take a seat using arm strength to get yourself there sitting in any way that is comfortable to you here roll your shoulders away from your ears so you can close your eyes palms come together at the front of the heart keeping the focus inward 
And really mentally scan your awareness through your neck, your shoulders, your upper back, and your mid back. Noticing what has changed, what feels different. Showing yourself and your body some gratitude. And together, let's close by chanting OM one time. Inhale to chant, breathe in. Om. Thank you so much, everyone. I really do hope you enjoyed this upper body yin yoga practice. If you are like me and you have a lot of tightness, especially in your mid back and upper back, these are really great poses to do on a regular basis to really loosen up that area and to just create more awareness around that tension as well. Please leave me a comment before you go. Do subscribe if you don't already. It's a wonderful way to support free yoga on the internet. And hopefully we will be practicing again together very soon.